Today I wanted to talk about selection bias, but I want to give you the selection bias explanation graphically. So once again, I think the better name for selection bias is conditioning on common causes. So conditioning on common causes. So this is, or common effects, excuse me. Uh, so this is a little bit different from what we talked about before. Uh, when we talked about confounding, we were talking about having a common cause. Uh, selection bias it comes about when you condition upon a common effect. So just because uh, maybe your treatment and your outcome might have a common effect does not necessarily mean that you will have selection bias. It only comes about when you condition upon it. Okay, let's give you the sort of uh, traditional graphical explanation of it. Um, so we have some sort of A. Uh, this is a treatment. In this case, it might be um, some sort of uh, med medication in order to, to treat uh, a heart palpitation or something like that an irregularity of the heart. We have the outcome, which is a regular heart or an irregular heart. Uh, I'm going to assume that there is no causal effect between this medication and uh, whether you have a regular or an irregular heart. So this medication is, is a dud. Uh, however, we do have one more thing here. And this one more thing will be uh, what we call C. Uh, this, is, this is our common effect. So this medication will have a chance of death so if you take this medication, you'll have a small chance of dying. And also if you have a, a poor heart condition in this case, you'll also have a chance of dying. So, so both of these have the effects of death, right? And we go ahead and we condition upon death in this case, upon this, this common effect, uh, mostly because we can't necessarily measure uh, a patient's heart palpitations if they, um, if they aren't alive. So, so, we, so we condition upon, upon being uh, dead. Uh, so in this case, which, which is basically saying let's, let's divide the population into two, uh, into alive and into dead and treat them sort of separately. Okay. So once again, uh, just so you can see the super laid out, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll show you that A and Y are associated. So we have A, which has an effect on some variable C, uh, which we are conditioning upon. We have C, which we are conditioning upon here, which also uh, uh, happens to be affected by some variable Y, which is the outcome of interest. Uh, so in this case, we had a blocker, which happened to be C. Uh, however, we conditioned upon this blocker, and now there's an associative link between A and Y. Okay, this is, this is the, the basic sort of selection bias example. Uh, we're going to be going over lots of more uh, different graphical representations of selection bias just to get your feet wet. But before we do that, I wanted to talk about the simple solution that I'm going to give to selection bias here. Um, and we're going to be going over more complicated solutions later on once we have a little bit more tools uh, under our belt. So the simple solution to selection bias is more assumptions. It is more assumptions. Um, and these are the assumptions of exchangeability on C. So exchangeability on this censorship. And I'm going to talk about that quite, quite in detail in, in the subsequent lectures. But these assumptions will allow us to... Um, control for selection bias simply using standardization. So simply using standardization, the, the tool that we had used before. Okay. Okay. So in this case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can control for selection bias using standardization during the next video.